So joining me on the line now is Ian McLean, um, the father of Duncan McLean and the, the founder of the Duncan McLean Fund. Um, Ian, thank you very much for joining us firstly. Um, would you mind telling us firstly uh, a little bit about Duncan's story? Um, Duncan was a student at Bristol University studying maths. Um, he had been struggling a bit at university and, and finished up in Christmas 2015 and decided to suspend his studies. Um, so he was at home for a month or so over Christmas and into January and at the start of February in 2016 he started having headaches. Um, we just didn't initially think there was anything untoward but um, he went to his doctor, um, got some painkillers, went back the next week to his, the doctor, got some more painkillers. We were gradually wondering if there was something amiss and um, a further visit to NHS 24 referred him back to his GPs toward, towards the end of February um, and they did a further full examination and um, came to the conclusion that there was something indeed wrong and we're going to refer him for a scan which happened the next day and confirmed a large brain tumour. Um, this is a total shock to us all. Mm. And it was obviously very sudden and, and very quick. It was very quick. It was three weeks from first visit to the doctor to the scan and diagnosis of a GBM, um, geoglioblastoma brain tumour, and he unfortunately died two days later. Well, I've got to say, Ian, since then, the £60,000 you've raised um, as part of the... Uh, Duncan McLean Fund um, has just been absolutely amazing. I, I was reading, obviously, on the Brain Tumor Charities website about it, and it, it just sounds fantastic. Would you mind um, kind of talking about the fund itself and, and what you've been working on? Yeah, we, um, short, we shortly after his death and funeral, um, there was a funeral co collection, um, which we hadn't been intending to do, but we realized that people did want to give um, at that time. And hmm. so we did a funeral collection, and that raised £2,500. Um, so we had to do something with that with that money, and I happened to be friends and, and play rugby with um, a, a neurologist at the Western Infirmary in Edinburgh, where he had died, um, and we talked to him and asked where um, that money might best go. Um, he's involved in a project um, relating to early diagnosis of brain tumours, um, and we decided that was a good link to you know, put the money towards that and that's that project's being done with the brain tumor charity so that's where that money has gone um and since then there have been a whole variety of events um, not just by us and the family but by heaps of other friends um former school pals the school where he was at in loretto and musselboro and other relatives just continuing to do things um of a whole variety of sorts um all supporting the Brain Tumor Charity and this early diagnosis project basically aimed at um, providing some um, research and to create a, a protocol to try to ensure that um, brain tumors are picked up at an earlier stage and giving those afflicted by them a far better chance of treatment and survival. Mm. You said about some of, um, obviously, Duncan's school pals, some of your kind of friends. Uh, have you been kind of overwhelmed, surprised by the, the generosity of people? Um, I mean, raising £60,000 is absolutely amazing. Um, it's the first main fundraising started in July 2016, which was a group of his friends who did a 24-hour golf marathon playing 54 holes in the village where we live, around which includes Muirfield, famous golf course, and um, also Gullin, also a famous golf course. Um, so they played 54 holes in 24 hours, and there were 12 of them. So that kicked it off. That raised about £20,000, um, which was astounding at the time. And since then, there's just been other friends um, and relatives running marathons, um, an extreme rat race around Edinburgh. Um, one of his school pals drove to Ula... Ula Batur in Mongolia and the oh, right. Mongol Rally. Um, I walked 100 miles across Devon. The school Loreto did a whole school fun run, 400 kids running in one afternoon. Um, and um, Three Peaks Challenge was 
a couple of school pals and his sister, cake sales, primary school fete, um, and et cetera, et cetera. Mm. So very well supported, and it's just kept going. And yes, it has been amazing. Talking about the charity itself now, the Brain Jimmy charity, obviously we're, we're doing 51 hours here at Raw, uh, non-stop for, for the charity. How have you found um, the kind of support you've received from, from the Brain Tumor charity? Um, the Brain Tumor charities, um, they're really nice people, they're good to talk to, they're empathetic, they understand it, um, and they're very supportive um, with any event that we or anyone else has been holding for the Duncan McLean Fund. Um, we've also touched base with the research people and just to try and get a bit of better understanding of what is, how it all happens. Um, I've been impressed with their degree of scientific um, knowledge and the, the process by which they decide which projects to choose. their sort of independent ratification of and analysis of applications for grants um, that they get, um, and they only they choose to support the best. Um, not just you, not just in the UK, they'll go abroad if that's where the best project is, which I kind of get. Then it's a worldwide thing that brain tumours, which are so underfunded and so lacking in effective research, so don't limit it to the UK. Go worldwide. So I'm I'm with that. Also, so, yes, great, a great charity. Um, to be supporting. Mm. I just wanted to say as well, Ian, thank you so much um, for getting in touch with us. Obviously, as you mentioned, um, Duncan was studying maths at Bristol University, and I'm sure that uh, a lot of, um, well, every student that, that hears it here um, would just find that particular example, obviously due to the circumstance and, and due to his age, just so poignant and so moving. Um, so, so thank you so much for getting in touch. I think that's been part of it in terms of the support that it's engendered. Mm. Um, the, I just he was far, far away from home, um, and the it's it's tough for students being away from home and things aren't going wrong, and yeah. they just need to reach out, look for the support, whether from family, from friends, or from the university's support mechanisms. And I think universities have to be really alert to these types of things and um, provide that support. Um, so yeah, it's just. It's so important for students to you know, deal with these things rather than just if 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 they think something's wrong. Um, definitely, um, and he, he was in the prime of his um, you know life, twenty year old, and um, everything to look forward to. Mm. No, definitely. I, I think you're completely right on the university point. I mean, there does need to be obviously more awareness about this. And yeah, you know, students shouldn't just be you know, you know have a yeah, if they do make, if they do reach out, they should be listened to and you know really sort of drilled into as to what the issues are, um, you know, whether it's a medical issue or otherwise. Um, it's just so important. Mm. Well, Ian, once again, thank you so much for getting in touch with us. I've got to say as well, um, the the kind of last thing I want to say on Duncan's story is one of the lines I found particularly moving is uh, when you recount the night of the 24th of February, um, of course, uh, Ian, uh, well, of course, Duncan's uh, mother's birthday, where you said was uh, a headache-free evening, for some reason a headache-free evening, which is, I just, yeah, obviously find the, the, the circumstance and that particular day um, quite a nice yeah. touch. It was all so quick and... Um, we didn't know what was happening, um, to be honest. Um, and uh, we didn't know at that time, but he died on the twenty eighth. So very, very quick. And I'm sure you, you'll treasure that particular night. Um, obviously, the twenty fourth. I've got a lot of memories. Yeah. Well, Ian, thank you so much for speaking to us, and for supporting our appeal here at Raw. Thank you. And good luck with uh, your um, your marathon. <laughs> <laughs>